Hi guys, this is Simon with ToughTrader.com doing a, really it's a webinar on what characteristics we see when we get a market turn and what those turns look like. Um, they're difficult, right, but they do share some characteristics um, that can actually be traded uh, quite clearly and um, set up some good risk reward parameters on them. So basically it's how to bottom fish without bottom fishing. Would be the uh, it would be what I would call this. So first, let's get the uh, disclaimer up here really quick. Let me find that desktop. Okay, there we are. So, really quick, past performance is not indicative of future results, and um, this is for educational purposes only. Basically, I'm sharing my trade plan with y'all in hopes this this will help make you a better trader. And along the way, I'll I'll be happy to answer questions. I will pause as I'm doing this and answer some questions. I probably expect this to take 35 to 45 minutes, somewhere in that range. So let's kind of get started. So first of all, let's start with euro, and then we'll roll over to to uh, gold. Right. By the way, congrats on anyone who took that uh, 58 a second time out of there. That was a tough trade to hold on to, but it finally popped, and uh, even ES finally came out of this gravesite down here to do a slow crawl to the upside, but it took to the very end of the day to make it, um, and it was nice to have a good day underneath our, uh, it, it, it's, it's been a bit of a rough go this week, so it was nice to have a good day uh, at the end of the week and have the calls come in the correct direction. <clears throat> so. Um, not that they were in the wrong direction, it's just difficult to make any call. So let's start off with the euro, right? So first of all, you can see the euro has been in an established downtrend. Let me get rid of this. There we go. Okay, so this is what euro looked like today on the chart, right? You can see that on the daily, we've been on a slight pullback, right? So I want to figure out a couple of things. First of all, when I start off, I know that I have general support from here down to here, right? But this gets tricky because you'll notice the lowest close in here was right here. And this thing has just been getting bled, right? This thing has just been getting bled underneath. And it looked like it wanted to start to roll to the downside, right? So what would argue for, so the first thing when you approach is what argues for a long versus short? Well, first of all, you clearly have your uptrend intact, right? From the daily standpoint, there's nothing wrong with this chart. And it's important that from a trading perspective, right, before you go get all bearish, is that you make a couple of determinations. So the first one is I look at higher lows and higher highs. Even from the day time frame, everything through here up to and including this is a higher low and a higher high. So I'm going to have a, a checkbook, right, when I go a checklist to go, well, what does a breakdown look like? What does a breakout look like? And it's such a simple question, right? But <clears throat> getting your mind frame your your mindset on what those questions look like and how to get them answered right is such a big challenge right because you get we get so focused in on the one minute five minute ten minute fifteen minute charts that we lose perspective of the bigger picture right so I'm gonna make sure that I stay on track if I get off track please someone jump in and tell me I get off track it's my Achilles heel I find something interesting I go down the rabbit hole so the next thing the daily chart tells me is that from here in this area we found consistent response of buyers, right? So I know, so what does this information tell me? I want to stop and think. This information tells me that somebody, I don't know who that somebody is, but every time that this group of people sold into this area, they were willing to step in and buy. So I know that there's buyers formally here, right? And that those buyers are usually inclined to be responsive buyers in this area. And GC is going to be a little bit of a different picture here, so I'm going to show you. So we're in an uptrend. We know we're in an area where we had buyers. Now how do we figure out the turn, right? So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to follow a process all the way through. I'm going to go to a 240-minute chart, a four-hour bar, and I'm going to look at this chart, and I'm going to go, okay, on a 240, you can see that we clearly, right, while we were in an uptrend, we clearly broke that uptrend, right? You can see that we've made an impulse move down, but we also got to remember that markets rarely make a move lower. So I want to take this chart, remember those are my higher highs and higher lows, and I want to figure out is there some area, right, is there some area from which I can draw 50-60. This becomes a little bit trickier here, 
ES again, guys, congratulations on whoever held that to the close. That was a nice trade today. I provided two really good trades. It's been the, it's been a little while on ES where we could I could find something, right? So the first thing, for my last swing low, which I would consider this my last swing low, right? I come all the way up, and I pull my 50-60. So the first thing I know is I'm not behind my 50-60 on my bigger draw, but really I don't have, if I drew off of each of these 50-60s, I don't really have a clear 50-60 that's in here, but I do know that I have support, right? Next, I do have a downtrend line, right? Again, not, I'm not a trend line trader, but I want to know generally what direction we're going in. And then the other thing I have on the 240 is you'll notice I'm making lower highs and lower lows. Not exact, so, so realize, the lower highs and lower lows, now I have to break my last swing low here to the left, right? And I'm trying to go as slow as I can because everyone has told me how wound up I get with this, right? So off to the left, I know this has to be broken. I also know this is a pretty big stretch, right? This was a trend down. And the thing that concerns me the most is if I look at it just like this, if I'm going to spread this out, right, and I'm looking for a reversal, it's really easy to see, ah, okay, I see why that reversed. But when you look at it from this perspective, and this is all you see, man, that really looks like a scary chart, right? We come in and we've got lower highs and lower lows all the way through here, and we've got an impulse move lower, right? And we haven't fit to 50 re retrace either, right? So now let's take it down to the 60-minute chart and take it even lower. Now realize, we haven't looked at volume profile yet. We haven't looked at the dome. We're just doing the chart part of this because I want to show you the part that's important, right? So notice, one of the things that had to happen on this turn, right, was that I see my last swing low over here to the left. If I'm going to bottom fish, I want a place where I can at least look for a potential trap. Now, realize this particular area, this is non-farm payrolls in this area right here, right? So I know my trap now from this localized area. I'm making higher high, lower highs, lower lows. This becomes my trap point, right? I need to get above this 17503, which means if I'm a bear, right, if we started on this downtrend and they push down, now I want to do one other thing. I'm going to insert my volume now, indicator, volume. Now this is volume by time. I'm usually looking at volume by price, right? And I want to show you something here. So now I'm going to go look at yesterday just on a big time frame, right? I'm going to go, oh, this, this bar was my biggest volume bar. This was the bottom of that bar, this was the top of that bar, right, and this was the bottom of the body of that bar, right, I'm going to spread all that out. And you're going to notice that that becomes really, really important, because you'll notice during non-farm payrolls, right, we put, see how we came down, once we made a break, we backside tested that exact bar. So I want to say that again so everyone sees that carefully. This is not a trade setup by itself, right. But it's an important piece of information. We know that on this particular day, and that's all we know, on this particular day, we had the highest amount of sellers in this one particular bar in volume by time, which is not the most precise volume we can use, but it's good for our purposes right now, right? I prefer volume by uh, profile, right? So next, as we are coming down, right, you will see that we came back, we broke below this at the close, and you can see an early European session, we came up and backside tested it, and then again, right before non-farm payrolls, we came up and tested the exact bottom of this bar. This told me this area right here becomes very, very important. If I can get above this area and close into this area at all, I have a good chance of pushing up. And look where we pushed up to and found resistance was right at one spot 7770, right, which is the very top of that same high volume bar. So we know from an hourly perspective right? This tells us some information. We can take a step back. We know that in the bigger picture, okay, we know in the bigger picture that in order to trend up, we've got to get above this bar, right? This bar becomes very, very important. But we also know that if I can get, now that we've rejected here two times, that if I can close back into this bar, right, that I have a very good chance right? I have a very good chance of pushing up. Now let's go take a look on a smaller time frame. But before we, we advance it any further, I want to go look at what the profile looked like overnight coming into this, right? So I'm going to go to a particular one, and I give credit to a member in the room to help me set this up. Uh, Brian helped me set this chart up. 
And what you'll notice here, so this is a volume profile. This is volume by time, and I have it broken down to Asia and Europe on the first bar and the U.S. session on the next bar. So the first thing that I'm going to notice when I look at this bar is it's confirming what I already see in the chart. All my volume is overhead. So what this tells me is something very, very specific, right? That I'm going to have a hard time pushing, no matter how bullish I am on the euro, right? My first test is going to be getting through all this volume. And let me show you why. Because if you look back to the left, right? See how we had, when we came down to low, we built all this volume, a big volume block in particular, right in here. See that? We spent three days building this block of volume. See how when we pushed in, it created constant response of buyers, right? Even when we poked our head in, we tried to break down, they popped back up, and they really tried to hold against these guys, right? You'll notice conversely, when we broke down a little to the left, what, and I'm trying to show why volume here is so important, right? See when we broke down from this volume build over here to the left? We, so you have a volume build, right? Again, very big time frames, right? You have a volume build you've made an impulse move below. What this tells me is that in order for the euro to continue from this point, this is back in the 20th of September, I've got to get above these guys to push higher. So using the volume profile in just the most basic way, when I look at volume like this, excuse me, there we go. When I look at volume like this, I can't see the volume there, right? All I see is volume by time. See how difficult it is? I can see that volume transacted and I can see that there was a lot of volume but what I can't see is this over here where I can see overhead that there's a ton of volume just sitting right on top so let's slow it down a step lower what does volume on top mean in order to have volume on top it meant that we had to have people accumulating above in price right what is human nature when you get upside down on a trade right there's gonna be a certain percentage of the population that lives up here that's gonna go hey I thought we were going up on the euro. I was acquiring the euro so I could make a profit long. And so when it gets underneath here, right, think about it. The shorts in this area are not in trouble, right? If you shorted up here, if you were a seller, you're happy down here. Who's having the difficulty? Only the buyers are having difficulty up here, right? So what's going to want to happen? The guys who had a profit over here who are sellers are going to want to defend. The guys who are accumulating longs up here were buyers. And they're going to want to find their opportunity to get out. Now notice. None of this gives us a specific trade location. This is all setting up a bigger time frame trade, right? This is all homework that you do at night to consider what your um, to consider what your process may be in terms of understanding the logic behind where you're trying to push a trade. So if I'm over here, right, and I'm going to go, hey, I think euro breaks out. I have to be thinking if I'm buying here, okay, fine, no problem. Good, I'm buying there. But I also know that I'm going to have to push through here. And the likelihood that we zip right through this is unlikely because of all the volume that's sitting there. They're going to have to grind through. And I'm going to have to account for the fact that the guys that got trapped here are going to come in and be responsive sellers. Now, taking that information and coming back over here to where we are right now, right? I know that even if I get long anywhere in here, right, anywhere in here, that I'm going to have to get through this block of sellers to push back up and then retest this block of sellers because now we have that's exactly what the overhead resistance is so I'm going to pause here for a second does anyone have any questions over this so far does this all make sense I'm trying to go slow enough to make sure everyone learns it and can write down a process around it so my first process I'm asking a very basic question are there is there resistance above? Is there resistance below? And what does it look like? And how long, right? How much time was that resistance built on? Because the longer it took to build that resistance, the more effort it's going to take to push through. I'm going to pause for just a couple seconds. Someone told me in the room that I asked the question and I give it like a minute. So I'll let the questions come across as, as we're going along and then I'll pause and answer them as we're moving. Okay, guys? So now going back to this question, the first thing I would have noticed when I'm looking at this chart, see how we did a ton, see how you can see where the volume volume's big and where it's not big, right? Just a quick visual glance. And you can see that overnight, we did a boatload of volume. Do you see that? How we did a boatload of volume in here? This is before and right up into non-farm payrolls, right? This starts, I believe, at 
this profile I have it set to US market hour so it goes right to late 30 right and in this area I can see that I have a double distribution of volume right which is very unique see how all the other nights there's very few here's another double distribution of volume and what that double distribution of volume tells me is this usually the one further away provides support or resistance on a double distribution of an overnight profile usually the one further away provides support right the other thing that I know is see from the prior day see all that volume build that we had so look we had all this build up here so I know three things so now I'm going to convert this chart I know that I had a big chunk of volume go off there I have a big chunk of volume here and another big chunk of volume here so now I can color my chart up a little bit right now I'm not going into any intra day analysis yet right I know that overnight that this area that white and purple area was very very important to hold above right because that's it showing a B profile it's a long liquidation I know that when I'm above that from the day time frame that it took a lot of sellers to build that profile if you'll notice when we go back and look see how that's specifically a B profile look how few B profiles there are in the euro I want to go back and look because what we're looking for so that was a B profile right we're looking for uniqueness in setups right because otherwise it you're oh, I didn't mean to move that otherwise you're constantly looking at everything and go what does that mean this is a unique profile and it's often found at a low or near a low right it means that people finally panicked out they pushed a lot of volume notice right here this was the prior low and this so see how this vol day's volume was distributed right and you can see that they pushed very hard in the European session here and failed to break because you can see the day session closed above this is the second push below and this time we had a very concentrated big push of volume down here right so now let's go and take that look right because we already know that we were setting on the bigger picture higher highs higher lows and on the smaller picture hourly lower highs and lower lows and we have a unique profile a B profile right that gives you very good intelligence and finally we know all the volume build is sitting right above us this gives us an upside target and where we know we're likely to start grinding all all of those pieces and that kind of starts I'm gonna say right here and goes to about right there okay and we'll dash this this is our potential upside target since we don't expect to make much progress beyond it in one day without gapping above okay so now we're gonna take that chart copy it paste it format analysis techniques remove close and now let's go down to a 15 minute bar and see how they responded now we're gonna ask a very basic question I do this all the time when I am studying right how are they responding right so we see this right here we know a lot of volume went off in here here and here right why because when I go to the volume profile back over here right so when I go back over to this profile I know yesterday that it took an exceptional amount of volume to build this bar right so I know there was a lot of sellers there I know below that these guys are trapped I know above if I can get above this I know they're long and I know that they tried to break before and they pumped a lot of volume into breaking this creates an automatic potential trap zone or breakdown zone right either one is possible I'm trying to read the tea leaves right so I'm going to go to candlestick chart because I just like the candles right I'm going to push this out and I'm on a 15 minute chart so the first thing I want to see when I'm trading so this is non-farm payrolls right here this is overnight and you can see this is where all that volume went off let's insert the volume so we can see what it looks like from the other from the more traditional way of looking at it okay I can see all that volume that went off through here right and all of it was clustered right in this area so when I see that volume what I want is I want that to look a particular way let me see if I can move this real quick there we go okay so I know when I'm in here what I want to see is either a push this way right away from what was a volume build that took place all the way through here right and I want to get over this was my last hump so I want to get over this hump right or I want to see some type of push away this way right and in either case right one of the things I'd like to see now this is still on a 15 minute is some negative space for those of you in the room you know what I'm talking about I talk about the negative space all the time so far we have nothing but what's interesting here is 
notice how we broke down here, right? So this was the overnight, this was the prior day's level, that white to purple. The yellow was the second overnight build, and all that volume got built in here. So see how we pushed down, we finally broke, and we came back right to the tick. Do you see that? Right there? Right at about, mm, that's about 1 in the morning, central time, 2 a.m. Eastern. Um, and we came right to the tick, and we rejected where? From where all that volume built, both in time and in price. Right? You can look at it both ways. You know that's what exists. They attempted to push in, and they failed, and they rejected. Right? But it did not reject huge. Right? But now we have an interesting situation. We're below the low. We know the volume's built here. And this is the interesting part. I know if I get, can find any way to close, hmm, close above this, I'm likely to push higher, right? So how do I take this trade? How do I take this trade, right? And how would I figure out that we were going to go down? So the first thing you'll see is, I'm going to remove this for today, right? The first thing you'll see is that we had a tweezers bottom on that 15 minute. Y'all see that? So we established a low. Not only did we establish a low, we established a low on really high volume which is normal. This is just after non-farm payrolls. I'm going to push out a little bit here. All right? I know that I established a low. I know I came back and tested that low and was unable to break. Right? And the interesting thing is, see how this bar closed below last night's low? Right? Closed below last night's bar. And this bar, this one 15-minute bar right here, so everyone knows what I'm talking about, Okay, so this is all observation at this point, right? We close back in to the overnight low, right? And I know the overnight low has a small problem. The small problem is I have the overnight volume built right here. So how do I figure this part out? So now I have to use my reasoning. I'm going to go, hey, look, we push down with a boatload, a boatload of volume, right? <clears throat> look at the amount of effort it took to break the low, right? Look and so you visually look, right? So this is just, this is a relaxed thing, right? This is not a, this part of it is not scientific. This is logic and reasoning. We pushed through a lot of volume and we got a really big bar. But at the bottom of that bar, they pushed really hard to break this low, right? And I'll show you what a break looks like in just a minute, right? We'll go back and find one actually in the Euro, right? But they put a lot of effort. This bar closed near the low. And it just closed an itsy bitsy teeny weeny bit below the prior low, right? And I would have been going, gee, I don't know. I thought with that much volume, right? So let's squunch this up so you can see the other day's volumes in there and get a comparison, right? Look back. Look how big that volume bar was compared to everything else, right? This is as close as it gets to the next volume bar, right? Of all these days of trading, this volume was enormous, right? That was an enormous single 15-minute bar. And they made just an itsy-bitsy tiny bit of progress, right? So now let's go zoom in here and see if we could figure out from a smaller time frame. So what do I want to see in here? Well, I know i got to get above this last swing high, right? <clears throat> and you'll notice that on this reversal here, right, this consolidation and this break from consolidation, this was the clue. And what I would have wanted to know, and I don't have it here, but I would have wanted to know where the volume build was. But we're going to assume for this conversation that on this push down overnight, right, I'm going to assume that the high volume build was right in the middle of that yellow line. Why am I going to assume that? Because I can see, right, that when we, actually I'm going to assume it's right here. And I'll tell you why. Let me look at this. Dun, 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 dun. I'm going to assume the high volume build was right there at 17402. I'm not going to go pull a volume profile on that little area, but I'll tell you why I assume that. See how they kept trying to push them. So see how they pushed above, backside tested it, got above, broke below, backside tested it, rejected, got above, backside tested, and then pushed, right? This is my first push, and all this down, right? So I'm looking for clues. Remember, that's all I'm doing. I'm not if I just built a chart and said, hey, this is where support is, right? Anyone can trade off that chart. I do that every day, right? I can go, here's where my support level is. Here's my, where my resistance level is. And I can generally use volume profile. The problem with that is that when I'm coaching guys or teaching guys how to trade, 
they don't connect the volume profile with what the price action needs to look like, which is what I'm trying to do, hopefully pretty slowly. Um, they don't connect what the volume profile and the price action looks like. So through all of this, right, this is from beginning from when we started to rip down here, right? This is the first time since the prior day at London Open, this was the first time I was able to make any kind of progress to the upside. That's a clue, right? What did that tell me? That there were buyers available. Not only that, but if you look, right, on this push, this was a push below the volume build, and this was a push all the way to the back for members in the room. Remember we spoke the other day that I get leery when we don't reject off the front. See, I like the, the breakdown and the reject off the front of structure here. You see that push down right there? But when we get to the back side, I get leery. Now, remember, okay, this gets tricky because we had non-farm payrolls, right? So now let's go see and look what we could have figured out on non-farm payrolls. We know that this was the low overnight. We know that we pushed with a boatload of volume. Let's go break that down to a five-minute chart now, right? We've gone from very big time frame to very small time frame. So the first thing you'll notice, right, is that this, again, on this bar, this becomes our biggest volume bar. So remember, this is a what I am looking for when I'm building my strategy for trading and what I'm trying to implement, which is difficult. If it was easy, everyone would do it. Is I want some continuity in my thinking process so I can repeat it. I want to algo my thought process and be able to verify so that I don't always have to rely on gut. If this is my biggest volume bar down and back over here, right, this was my biggest volume bar. It turned out to be up, but if you remember, this is the one area where we had a very large volume bar over here, right? And that became, that bar, continuity, 15 down to 5, became our support and resistance area, right? So I would go, my line of thinking goes, hey, on the biggest volume bar that we have, and that volume bar, by the way, exceeded this volume bar, I would go, hey, we should break, we should break structure to the left. And one follows that. So I'm going to have a check mark. I'm going to have a reasoning list. Big volume. We should have broken. The very next bar is up. Okay. But then if you look, they came right back on it. Right. Now, notice I now have after non farm payrolls, if I take this one little area, and I'm going to break this all the way down to a one minute chart, although I don't trade off of a one minute chart, I'm going to break this all the way down to a one minute chart so everyone can see it. So now, you've got to practice this process because all of this occurred in a pretty short time frame and you have to have the focus level up. Push on volume, illogical that we cannot hold below, right, the swing low from London, right? We push back into London, that's my first clue, right? Now, guys in the room are familiar, I'm just going to draw a regular draw and I'm going to go, hey, now this draw held perfectly, right? I could have said, for a low risk entry, I had a big volume push. This would, this part of the trade would have to be all off of gut, right? None of this would work. None of this, this particular setup right in here would work unless you could read that this was a big volume push and that we failed to hold below London low. The fact that we even pierced back in was a clue that sellers trapped themselves below. Does everyone follow that? Is that clear? Was I clear on that? Brian or anyone? I want to make sure that I'm saying this in a very clear, concise manner. Then we're going to do gold in a minute. Yes, we're good. Mari, you're still with me. You agree too? Randy? Okay, good. Okay. So, I still don't know for sure that it's turning. This is where I'm the most aggressive, right? But now, right here, what have I done? I've pushed, this was my high, they attempted to reject, and now we had a bar that closed above. Now, I don't want to buy on this bar that closed back in, right? But I now have a higher low, right? So I want you to realize, all through here, right, I'm trying to figure out something very difficult, and I need some rules to do it, so that I can set up my trade in and out, okay? All through here, when I'm going down at night, right, through here, I talk about higher lows, right? So notice all the way through here, I can't get a higher low till right here. See, I finally get above. All the way through this process, I can't get a higher low on any demonstrative 
measure relative to my time frame, right? So even on the smallest time frame, I'm having a hard time. I finally accomplished that right here. The problem with that is I'm running smack into non-farm payrolls, which is a highly volatile period, and I generally don't want to be trading there. So I have to immediately start my process over. So now I choose not to take my retrace, which would have smoked me had I done it, because I'm going to have a flood of volume come through here. It pushed down. They failed to get below the low. They get back in. Now look, now not only have we pushed back in, they attempted to reject back out, and now, even though it's small, right, I made a higher low. Now I'm going to take the same area, right, take the same area, and I'm going to draw this out to a smaller time frame. So let me do this. I do not trade off of a one minute. I don't suggest it. I'm just doing this for dramatic effect, right? So we can see really clearly. Okay. Let's get rid of this. Now we're going to have to bring volume way up there. You know what? The volume is going to be so small down here. I don't know if it's worth it. We'll, we'll, we won't worry about volume at the moment, okay? So the first thing I'm going to notice, right? Remember what I'm, I'm looking for in the back of my head. I have it written down on the top of my notes every morning. Higher highs, higher lows, right? Higher highs, higher lows keep me in business. So I know that I had my push down. I know this was on big volume, right? I know that I had my first, this is important. Even within here, I had my first 50, 60 back and they held. They weren't able to break the low, right? So I have number two on my checklist. I can keep rolling through. Now I've broken my swing high. Now I can come up and draw my bigger picture 50-60. I realize this is on a small picture and we retrace. Now, does this guarantee that I won't lose money? It does not at all, right? What this does is let me put a logical process of thinking if I can think fast enough, right? So, and you had time, right? Think about this. This occurred at 7.30, right? Your entry, right, that, through that whole process, your entry is taking place. You've had 7.30, 8, 8.30, 9, into 9.30. Two hours, right? Two hours to think this process through if you're targeting or if you're a trader of the euro, right? So, what, so now let's go to the coaching part. What's required that you do that? First of all, you had to have a clear enough sense to look at that volume, and make the distinction that, hey, that was a really big volume push, and they couldn't make a, for the amount of effort that was put in, energy expanded, they got very little return. You had to accept that, number one. Number two, you had to look on some time frame, five minute, I wouldn't suggest one minute, but five minute, 15 minutes, so on and so forth, that there was an effort to put an impulse move up, which we got right here, right? Now I have to have, there's a next step, I might be brimming with excitement, but notice when we pushed up, right? So pretend instead of this being a one minute chart, that this was like the daily chart that I showed you earlier, right? Everyone remembers the, the volume profile chart, right? So this is all volume, right? So what's going on in here? The same story, again, continuity from a one minute to a one hour to a four hour to a daily to a weekly. There's volume in here. When we pushed down, the shorts weren't upset, right? Anyone who shorted up here was like high-fiving, right? The longs are in trouble there. That's who's in trouble, right? So when we come back up over here, right, if I'm long, I'm going to go, thank you, Lord, for letting me out of my trade with either a small loss or break-even. I'm grateful. I've stressed for so long, and I held through the non-farm payroll, and, man, this thing's in a downtrend, and I just want out, right? that I'm going to bail, my first reaction is going to be, if I wasn't weak over here and bailed over here, I'm definitely getting out over here, right? A certain percentage, so if you look at it as a percentage of the population, a percentage of the trading population is going to panic, a percentage of it is going to hope it gets back and get out, and another percentage is going to go, I'm in a good location and I don't care about a couple of ticks one way or the other and I ain't selling. But that group, there's a pretty good chunk of this group that's going to sell on the retest because they were hoping 
right? What they were hoping for is they noticed before non-farm payrolls that we started making higher lows and higher highs, and they were hoping that was going to work out to a moonshot to the upside. So those guys go, thank you, I'll get out right here. Now we make the 50-60 retrace. Again, this is a one-minute chart, but you can pretend it's a five-minute, 15-minute hourly. The continuity stays through. This is important, and the reason I'm going through this is because when we're trading in the room, there are underlying conditions on larger time frames and on smaller time frames that repeat. And this pattern repeats on all time frames. A heavy, we talk about it in ES, right guys? Heavy push down, either an inability to break the low or a break of the low and then an immediate snap back in, which Mari, that's one of your favorite trades, the trap trade, right? Pull it back, take it back and run it to the upside. So what's happened here? We've pushed below, we've trapped back in, we made a higher high, we got a gentle retrace back into the 50-60. You have two choices on stops. You can say, hey, as long as it doesn't close behind my 62 retrace, right? So this goes back to the idea that I talk about in the room all the time. Certain trades look perfect. Your hard stop on this trade is back here, right? But you could be a trader who decides, hey, if it closes behind the 62, I'm out anyways. I'll rework the trade later. I don't want to take the stop at the low. My hard stop might be at the low, but then I'm going to stop underneath the 62. So if you take this trade here, you had to wait not a very long time. It makes an impulse move, and then the next thing you want to see, right? So again, pretend this is any time frame you like, right? Prior to making that low to that 62 retrace, that was this was your uptrend, right? This was your barrier that you had to get above, right? And you will see we came in, we pushed, we now have a series, right, of higher highs and higher lows, right? And then what you're going to see is when these guys rejected, right, as soon as everyone figured out that we couldn't retest the low and we couldn't get back over, right, Mari? So this, is, this should look very familiar to you. You may need a larger time frame, not you personally, anybody, right? What we've done is we've trapped back in to our overnight low, right? We've attempted to break one more time, and as soon as we noticed we came down, we retested exactly and pushed back up. That was the first visit to the 50 retrace, right? Came back one more time, but remember, we haven't broke the 62 retrace. I've been covering this in the rim extensively. When it doesn't break the 62 retrace, it tends to be very, very bullish, right? And again, this is a 62 off the lows as opposed to a 62 off of a trend day up, right? So now we make this impulse move, and this is where everyone covers. That's what the nature of the turn looked like. Now, there was a trader who pointed out that there was great support in this area, and he called for the U-turn, but he called for the U-turn, someone I follow, he's a good trader, right? But he thought he's been looking for the U-turn since all the way up here, right? He's been buying into this hole. No criticism of him whatsoever, none. It's his style of trading, and he's very successful, right? But it required that he held through non-farm payrolls, which, if you're a leverage trader like I am, I can't, I can't tolerate this, right? But once this is out of the way, and I know where the biggest volume push is, and now, notice that each step that I went through there had a ability to algorithm that process. There's a volume push. There's an inability to hold below the low. There's, on some time frame, a 5-minute, a 1-minute, a 15-minute, there's a higher low, right? And now I've waited for the retrace, and part of that algorithm is I haven't closed behind the 62 retrace, right? Now I get the impulse move up, and if you look to the left, now if we go back to a higher time frame, 15 minutes, right? What have we done now? Let's collapse this back down. Let's open this back up. Right? So if I look to my left, notice what I see to my left, history-wise. See how we've ripped through this area pretty cleanly every time? Right? So now look, what do you think can potentially happen here? So this is my wall. This is where people are accumulating. This is where they got in trouble. This is the swing high ne needed to break. So notice, we were able to figure out, with a good chunk of focus, right? This wasn't like a, oh, I looked at it. This was a, I thought this process all the way through, slowly and methodically, right? I was willing to take a risk near the low because I recognized the volume, I recognized the trap, 
and I recognized the higher low, and then I had the discipline and patience to wait for the 50-60 back, understanding that if I was wrong, I was going to take a stop right back here, which wasn't a horrific stop. And then I had to have one more piece of understanding, right? That if we broke this high, because I could look to my left, I can look to my left, I can look to my left, and see that this area gets traded through a lot, I had to understand that I could come back, probably we hit that Sunday night, at one spot 790, all the way up to one spot 18165. Right? So now I have all the pieces put together and not just a, hey, I want to get long, make it easy on me kind of trade. Instead, I have a, I can write each one of those steps down, right? And now I can understand what, now I can take this model that I just went through, right? And you should be able to go to any product, any product, and find a very similar setup. I guarantee you. I would bet money on it right now. This setup doesn't well, does not happen every day. It happens a lot. And we could find it all over the place. And if you flip it upside down, <clears throat> if you flip this model upside down, it also happens to the short side. We can find the exact same model. As a matter of fact, if I bet if I just take a gander up here, right, and I go look at it the other way. See where we're going making higher highs and higher lows through here? biggest volume push right there see that on that bar when I make that biggest volume push I expect to what I expect to stay above my last major swings right but notice what I got back here a huge volume push back down see that they came back up to test it right now what am I making all of a sudden I'm making a lower a lower high a lower high a lower low right so I'm, I bust my last swing low to the left, right? This is just on a 15 minute. I come back up, I have a lower high, right? And now I know that if I break this lip, right, I will, which means I've gotten underneath, right? At this point, what do I have? I had a bunch of people buying, hoping it was going up. Now I got trapped behind. What did I have to get past? These guys off to the left, right? Because all these guys are happy if they're long, right? The group in here that bought, that's long, they're happy. And then where did these long liquidation take place? Underneath these guys, and down we push. So it's the same pattern reversed, right? So <clears throat> I'm going to take just a minute to grip some water real quick. My throat's getting dry. And then we're going to do gold. And then we will, um, does anyone have any questions? If you have any questions, just send them over to me. Have a great afternoon, Mari. And, and I hope you had a great week. I hope you caught the ES and the uh, NQ longs. We're going to do gold in just a moment. We'll go back. Was that helpful, guys? That process, breaking it down, algorithm in it. Algorithm your process, right? So you can repeat it over and over again and understand what are the pieces that go into your process so that when you come out of that process, right, you know that you've got a, you're not frantic in your mind. You go, okay, I had all these pieces. They all lined up and I, was, and I got my green light to go and take risk right and realize that you have time to make that decision it doesn't have to be a split second decision you actually have time to let the market set up and come to you okay give me just a second I'll be right back Thank you guys. So so the conclusion on this, right? The conclusion on this is what pattern and what steps am I specifically looking for, right? When I'm looking for a reversal, what steps am I specifically looking for that I'm capable of identifying with the tools that I have and on the time frame I work on, right? 
what do I want that pattern to look like? Because the market is simply a machine that repeats the patterns, not identically, but they sure do rhyme. And they allow you to set up risk in a way that you don't have to be anxious about it, right? And that is the point of going through and having a process and going, I want to see A, I want to see B, I want to see C, I want to see D. And as your confidence rises, right, and your anxiousness goes lower, you'll notice more and more nuance and you'll get better and better. But this is a very broad overview of what you're looking for. And then, so let me touch just for a second on what the, on what, what doesn't happen. It gets frustrating, right, if you, if A, you skip a step and the trade gets busted, right, or sometimes it'll just reverse, right? Sometimes it just doesn't give you, okay, so see this breakdown over here where you're waiting patiently, you got behind everybody, and you're like, okay, I'm waiting for the retrace back up now, and it just, it just rolled, right? And important, you don't chase, you don't change, unless your trade plan says, unless your trade plan says I'm looking for a particular entry, right? You don't chase that entry. You just go, okay, my setup didn't come. I'm waiting for the next one. That's what great traders do. So now let's go through the same process, but on a little bit different, it's a little bit different product. It's gold. Gold's been in a stronger downtrend. Let's look at the turn in gold today. Okay, so first let's start right from the top, going back to, I like this particular chart, so we'll use it, gold. So first, on the TPO chart, right, on gold I can see that I had a ton of, of overhead, right? See all that? We spent a lot of time trying to push higher, right? So we now have a lower high, right? We have a lot of overhead resistance. We had support over here to the left. We've drilled very methodically and slowly through it, but we've gotten underneath it for the most part. See the majority of it was right here. And we've clearly gotten underneath that support, right? We had another group of little piece right over here. But for the most part, the biggest part of support was over here to the left, right? So that's my very big picture, right? I know from the prior night, looking from a time process, which is what this is, that I have opened up in Asia, right? I opened up underneath value and I pushed into value <clears throat> and I pushed into value late in the day, but I was below value the great majority of the day. And I know that I had a time build sitting right here, right? very small time build, but I had a time build and the majority of it is sitting on top, which is a problem, right? So we're now talking about catching a turn from a product that is in a straight downtrend, right? So let's go look at the volume profile now. Oh, wrong one, that was today's chart. There we go. And let's find, here we'll just switch this up. Now that's a bull market right there. Excuse me. It's coming right up. Hopefully, trade station will last on. There we go. So clear, established downtrend, right? Before I came in the day, I know that the majority of my volume has been building, and they try to get a reversal. So I want to show you this. See this right here where all this heavy volume got put in at the bottom? Okay. See how over the next two days, okay, if I was going to draw a line, I'd draw a line like this here and here. And see how we've tried to hold that line, right? We've tried to hold, we got above it, and we've tried to hold above it, including closing above for the last two days. And you can see that we've tried to do that before. We built a pretty good chunk of volume, tried to get above it, and then we failed. Notice that when we failed, the backside tests of that volume area became short location, right? Why is that important? That's important <coughs> because if you're trying to get gold to fly to the upside, minus fundamental news, if you're trying to get gold to fly to the upside, just like we couldn't get above this here, you know you have markers, right? Just like blood gives you markers, you have to get above each of these levels. This one's a little one. This one's a pretty big one, this whole chunk, right? These are each levels that we're going to have to get above. And notice that on a closing basis, so one of the characteristics of gold right now is on a closing basis, we can't get above the old volume builds. That's part and parcel for a downtrend. Just like in an uptrend, we don't get below going the other direction, right? So the first thing I know, I'm in a heavy downtrend. So don't expect it to fly up to 1350 without some kind of fundamental news, right? 
Next, let's go look at the overnight build. Okay, so I know short. I know fundamentally that counter rotations down since back on the 11th have been working better than trying to attempt longs. That's my first problem with my long here. We're still going to move forward, right? So next, when I go look at the overnight session, I'm going to minimize this. Should have a GC up here, but I may not. Let's get there. We go. Okay. I can see that overnight, I'm going to start building my chart. Right. I built a very large chunk of volume. Okay. I know that I've got to get above this. I know that from yesterday, this is my low. I know I built the volume above the low. I can tell from the way this worked that I tested below and trap back in. So what did the reversal over here, right? Because clearly we reversed, clearly we pushed. And where do we push into? This is my logical area to push into because that's where my volume build is, right? Two things for guys in the room while we're talking about this. Remember when I talk about weak profiles that are easy to trade through? The one thing we had going is we knew once we were above this volume build, there was not much standing in the way of this until this area again. You'll notice if we can get past that area, we have a very weak build again, all the way up to 1286, right? So that's really good to know for the longs, right? So next, let's go copy this chart. We know that we had our volume build here, and we know that we had our prior days low here. So I'm going to mark prior days low in red, right? And let's see if we have anything else. We haven't been down in this area in a long time, right? Prior days low, prior days high. We'll call that purple, right? And we'll call the, that white area. Our volume build okay now let's go see how everything got treated right click copy paste format analysis techniques remove again I'm thinking in process so the first thing I'll see when I think in process from the day time frame right I'm in a big nasty downtrend so the first thing I want to see is for everyone I look on stock twits who's calling a low or Twitter, I want to go, okay, well, what were you doing up here and up here and up here and up here? Because this is just bone-faced ugly, right? We've worked through every single level on the way down, right? Next, I can see when I look at it from a day time frame, see how I, ha okay, so see when we got to this build, so I can think through this logically, right? When I got to this build over here, so see when I got to this build, I held on this build. When I got underneath this build, I came into this build and grind, was grinding through. See how they're correlating? One, 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 one. And this held both the top and the bottom, right? And so what's my next area over? This right here, right? And if you can see when we're pushing in, what are we doing today? We're pushing into the very bottom of this. We already popped off the top. See that? We popped off the top of this structure, which was the bottom of this structure. Now we came off the top here. Now we're exploring the bottom of the structure over here to the left. And what do I need to break that structure? Just like when I look over here, see how we tested down and broke? See how I closed below that or tested below that? That was my clue that I was rolling lower. And what do I need to go higher? I need to get above this structure right here. We'll color that, I don't know, yellow. I've got to get above it. That's my, that's my bogey. And I'm now going to put a line over here to the left. Alright. But that in this area was my last swing low. So now I have some good information to go off of, right? So now let me go to the 240 chart. And I'm gonna do it methodically, right? I want to know how each piece looks. Okay. I can see now, right, that this was my prior swing low. I've broken that swing low on yesterday in yesterday's swash session, but closed back in within that volume build, right? That volume build came from overnight, right? And I know that I haven't hit that 1257, which was my prior swing low in this area, right? So now let's take it back, and I want to switch these candles because I hate them, right? So I can see. A couple of things. I'm going to insert volume now. Volume by time. And once again, I can see 
that I've had one of the highest volume days on the 240 right here. That's huge volume. The last time I had that big volume was all the way back over here, right? So I can go look and see how it treated that volume. So see that right there? That was my volume up bar. Notice, as soon as I got underneath it, see when I closed underneath it right here? Off it went. Why? Because what you did is you got a bunch of buyers to come in on this bar. And as soon and what did they what did these buyers have to do? Right? This this holds true on all time frames. They had to get above the last group of sellers, the last swing high. So we put in a ton of effort and failed to get above the last swing high. We slowly retraced as we ran out, and as soon as we got underneath, they blasted to the downside. Notice the backside test here, and down it went. Okay, so I know I have pretty big volume. Now, I know two things. If I get above that bar, A, that's bullish. That looks like climactic selling, right? Secondly, excuse me, this was my push yesterday, right? Highest volume was on this bar, right? And then I pushed behind it. So I know both this bar and this low become very, very important. Now let me go down to the hourly. In the hourly, you can see that we built up a ton of volume in here overnight, very light but still a lot of volume in here and that we definitively close below and then we put on non-farm payroll. So notice as soon as we got above, right, the same pattern, they squeezed immediately. So now we're going to ask the same question. Was there anything we could have seen in here, right, that would have helped us out? So now let's go to a five minute bar. So I'm going to have the same reasoning I had right here, right? I pushed heavy on volume. I know I pushed below the low and I know once I get back above yesterday's low, I'm in trouble. Okay, lower highs, lower lows, and this is a perfect example of when we turned. Okay, so now I want I want you to go through the frustration of this with me, so you understand. You did all this work, right? You notice that there's higher highs, higher lows. You stand clear because of non-farm payrolls. You see the push down in volume, right? See that right there. See the push down in volume there? Inability, so we push back up, and then on the first bar we close below, right? See how we close below this time? And backside tested it, failed to close back in. This becomes important. This is my last swing area, right? Now notice, as soon as I get above, what I want now is I want to get back in, maybe come up here, and just like we had in Euro, I would like some type of 50-60 retrace to set up. In this particular case, I didn't get it, right? So understand, understand that the only way to have caught this trade, right, would have been to buy the low. Since there was no backside test for me to take off this push up, I am simply out of luck. There's no way for me to take this trade. The closest place I could have taken this trade would have been on the retest of this build all the way over here, which would have been a fine trade, nothing wrong with it, but that was the closest place I could have come, right? It was the first time we, we, we came back against this process, right? So what do you do with this? And this is where I'm going to leave this off at, right? The answer is if you're a disciplined trader, nothing. Guys who catch falling knives, who catch these lows, right, without waiting for higher lows and higher highs like you got in Euro, lose money pretty consistently because they can't tell where it's going to reverse. Guys who wait for the process to come in and somewhere in here we'll get a retrace and they use that low as their stop, right? So I can tell you, we'll watch over the weekend. Knowing this is in a downtrend, right? I want to try and get, get a retrace here and guess what I don't want? I now have a clearly defined entry and exit and stop for a long entry potential. I didn't get run over I didn't get run over to the long side, and I didn't get run over to the short side. I waited patiently for the turn. It just didn't give me the reversal that I was looking for. And that's it. And you, by the way, I want to go back one more day here, right? If you're doing that same process, right, and you're waiting for your entry, I want to show you all this because it's not nearly as difficult as everyone thinks, right? You could have caught this in the direction of the short. So yesterday you look. What are we doing? Higher highs, higher lows. And you go, for whatever reason, you identify this on a bigger time frame. This is my short. We've gone through a distribution period, consolidation, and we break below. Okay, that's the first swing low, but we really haven't broken, right? We come back up. We make a lower high. I want you to follow this sequence. 
new low, lower high, and now we have definitively made a new low, right? Now all I have to do is take from my swing high, right, down to my swing low, right? This is a five minute, but it applies on any time frame, okay? Get my push back up to the back side. Now what do I have? I have an entry. I have a stop, right? So that's an entry at 1279.90, a stop at 1281.60. It's a reasonable stop, especially for a five minute time frame, right? And without going into a deep volume profile analysis on this, right? And now I have a beautiful roll off a of five minute entry to the downside. And in all of this, right, notice that this is the first time when we're going up, once we start going up, that we've broken down. And you'll notice that, that pattern, because we're short, keeps appearing, right? I want to show you this on a new day, right? We come up, right? We establish a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, lower low, lower high, right? And I want to show you this. From here, where that pattern started, to the low, um, lower high, lower low, oh, there you are, right there. High, Lower low, so there was a low, new low, third low, 50, 60 back, retracement back down, push to the downside, and you got paid again, right? So this pattern appears everywhere, although I don't trade in Asia, just FYI, I hate trading in Asia. So anyways, that's my two cents, guys. Does anyone have any questions? I hope that helped. The goal is, even on something as simple as higher highs, higher lows, even if you can't do the volume analysis, right, from the volume profile standpoint, higher highs, higher lows, and 50, 60 retraces are the basics, and they keep you making money. They keep give you a built-in protection from a, for a stop-loss standpoint, right, and they work on all time frames. So I hope that helped. If you would like to um, join us during the week, you're welcome to. Uh, email me at, for right now, tradeandperform at gmail.com. We're switching over emails as we speak. And I'm happy to extend a five-day trial period in the room. Uh, we ha I had a rough week because I didn't have very many trades. Uh, but I did have a very good day today, and I closed the week out strong. So that was nice. So uh, anyways, I thank you all for joining. Remember, there's two major rules. Do not blow up, right, and have a process that you're following, right, and do not consistently draw down. If you're consistently drawing down, stop and reevaluate your process. And finally, have a checklist when you're trading so you can check off that you've actually hit all your markers. I hope this helped you guys. I hope everyone makes money. That's my, as a coach, uh, as a trader, I like making money, right? I like taking money out of the market. As a coach, I love seeing people succeed uh, on their own, uh, on their own abilities. So thank you all for joining. Uh, it was a pretty full room today. I was a lot of people came, so that was good. Anyways, have a wonderful day, and uh, guys, we'll see you all later. Congratulations to everyone who killed it today in the room, guys.